patients okay. in time. <laughs> uh, Waipapa Papanoi Inners Community Board. <laughs> Kia ora koutou. Um, thanks for having us along to present today. Um, I'm going to take the report as read and we don't have any part A, so we're just going to highlight a few things that have been going on in our area. Um, just first up, I do want to say we this year decided not to run our community board events like the Edible Gardens and the Community Pride Garden Awards and those sorts of things. Um, we put that money back into our um, funding to go out to community groups this year. Um, so that's why we don't have any pretty pictures of those things. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, it's just acknowledging Children's Day, uh, which is really a city-wide event, uh, but with some high involvement from the Waipapa Papanui and the staff, and in particular our recreation advisor. Uh, it was really sad to see that it couldn't go ahead in person this year because of the issues around COVID levels at that time. Uh, but was really what was really uh, good to see was there was really good engagement online. It shifted to an online event, and there was really positive engagement. Uh, by the community with that format uh, and looking forward to it coming back in person next year. Um, we had our first principals meeting for the year. This is something we do once a term with the principals from our area. Um, we give, uh, have a breakfast meeting and we usually invite a guest speaker along um, and then we just have a general chat about what's happening in the schools. Um, and this month we had staff from the Council's Learning Through Action program come to speak about what's on offer for schools through their programs. Um, part of the reason for doing this is because our board has um, recognised the importance of civic education for young people. Um, and so this year we've actually set aside some funding to pay for transport to get school, school children to those um, council courses um, programs on that. So we wanted to let the principals know what was on offer there and. Um, We've had some uptake on that already, so that's great to see. Uh, community events, sort of the summer season is coming to a close now. We've had a slice of summer, a series of events. The final one uh, held at the end of February in Sheldon Park, run by Belfast Community Network. Uh, also on the same day, the Community Focus Trust uh, ran a community day in St Albans. Uh, both of those were really well supported and had great feedback uh, from those who attended. Um, we also had the Shirley Shine event, which was run by um, Shirley Community Trust. Um, that was attended by over a 1,000 people at McFarlane Park. And then that bottom picture there is one of our Summer With Your Neighbours um, events. It was the Willowview Community Gardens in Redwood Springs at the reserve in there. Uh, the Mayor and councillors will be well aware that this weekend we are opening the St Albans Community Centre. Uh, construction is complete. It's been handed over to the St Albans Residents Association, who are the operators of the facility. Uh, we've been gifted the name Kohinga, uh, which really has a triple meaning in this context. Uh, it really means to gather or to collect, and it reflects the uh, geography of the area with waterways uh, that come together as tributaries. It also reflects the historic use of the area by mana whenua in uh, gathering as a mahinga kai area. Uh, and also the now current use as a community centre of the community gathering together uh, under that roof. The official in opening is this Saturday morning. You will all have been invited and we look forward to seeing uh, the Mayor and uh, some, of, some of our councillors uh, there as well. Um, another thing that has been happening behind the scenes is this correction of a historical misspelling of um, what has been called the Kaputoni uh, stream. Um, this came up as we were looking at consultation on name changes at two reserves on the Styx River. Um, the original Māori name of the waterway was Kaputahi, but the story goes that it was misread and then has been spelled incorrectly ever since. Um, so we're wanting to restore its original name, and so that process is underway. It was pre-spec time. <laughs> yes. Long time ago. Uh, and just... Uh, an update for councillors uh, and the Mayor on downstream effects of the Northern Corridor motorway. Uh, there's ongoing work at the moment and really experimental traffic calming underway in consultation with the local neighbourhood uh, in the Francis Street area. Uh, that is leading to some frustrations in adjacent streets. Uh, at the moment Francis Avenue is being cul de sac for a couple of weeks in one format and then there's a mid-block cul-de-sac being trialled again under temporary traffic management so that we can get feedback from the community on the impacts that's having and we can see what it does to traffic patterns. 
Uh, one thing it is doing to traffic patterns is it's diverting some traffic, including local traffic, to adjacent streets. And uh, we're getting a lot of questions at the moment from residents about, about that, and it's keeping our staff and our council staff here very busy uh, responding to those. Uh, also, last week there was a public meeting in Redwood for residents in that area who are being impacted by noise from, uh, from the motorway. Uh, that meeting was organised and facilitated by Duncan Webb. Uh, we had NZTA and project staff in attendance as well. There's been some actions uh, come out of that. Uh, there's a number of questions about aspects of the design being asked by residents. Uh, one of the really obvious things at the moment is we're in the period where the motorway has opened and is being operated at full speed, but the final low noise asphalt seal on the road is not there. So we've kind of got the worst of both worlds and how it's operating right now. Uh, that seal is programmed to go on in the next sealing season, which starts in spring, but we could be up to a year away for the, from that being completed. Uh, so there's some questions being asked at the moment that's sitting between Dr. Webb and NZTA. Uh, all the Papa Nui uh, community board staff um, uh, members and our two councillors were both at that meeting as well to support residents who are um, really clearly being impacted by that issue. Yeah, um, one thing that residents do want to happen straight away there is for NZTA to drop the speed limit on the motorway to reduce the noise. Um, they were told at that meeting that this wouldn't make enough, it wouldn't make a noticeable difference. Um, but um, as Simon said, Duncan Webb is following that up on behalf of those residents as a local MP. And that's us. Thank you. Um, and I've noticed that um, Councillor Davidson's got a couple of. Um, uh, additional recommendations that he'd like included in the resolution, which is um, requesting that I write to Waka Tahi and um, request that the speed limit is temporarily, temporarily reduced to 60k um, until the final service is added. So mm -hmm. from my understanding of the meeting, the public were quite clear that when, the, when it was opened, it was at a lower speed and it was um, noticeably quieter than it was yes. when the speed limit went yes. up. And um, they, the public have noticed that cars are going well over 100 at the moment, so yeah. bringing it down should. And the second one is that I write to the Minister of Transport outlining Council's concern with the current speed limit of the motorway and adverse effects on neighbouring residents. But again, I assume that is until the final service is added. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Um, Pauline? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to ask Simon about the time frame for that second seal. I, n I know that NCTEA said it could commence in the spring or October, but I thought they said it would be completed early next year. Are you sure they said a year? Uh, you are correct. Yeah, early next year completion yeah. is the current target. I guess yeah, we're only just into April, so it's, it's oh, 10 so months. Oh, so a year from now, yeah. But so, yeah. okay. Um, uh, yeah, a year from now should all be done. Th yeah, I thought you meant a year from when it's commenced. They start it in spring and then it's obviously they've got the whole motorway to do, yeah. plus QE2 drive. So yeah, because that's relevant for the, the time frame that we we're asking for here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you. Um, Aaron? Yeah, just a question around why the number of 60 and not 80 was selected. I live 50 metres from an 80k state highway and it's, it is a big difference from 100. Well, that's the thing that was going to open. Right, so that was why you chose... No, there's, there's a little bit more to it than, than that, which I can... To during my debate. Okay. Well, it might my be comments. useful in terms of questions, but I don't want to take away from yeah. the community board. Um, but I might allow a couple of questions of you, Mike, as the. I'm assuming that you're moving the, the, the total package. Yes. And yeah. you're seconding the total package, right? Yeah. I'll, so, uh, well, I'll, well, I'll come back because I've, I've got questions of the community uh, board. Uh, uh, so I'll just come back to you. Um, uh, on a separate matter, was it, Yanni? It's this matter and a different matter, yeah. Well, can you deal with the different matter with the community board? Yeah, OK. Um, just the Langdon Road um, issue with the traffic. Has there been any progress on that? Uh, we're having a briefing next week from the um, council engineer who's been looking into that. So I'll have an update after that. Right. But is it still a, it's still a relevant live issue? Yes, yes absolutely. OK. Yeah. And did you have a question for the community board on that? Yeah, just on the, um, the, the highway or the Northern Motorway, um, I was just kind of interested if anyone's looked at the resource consent or the designation, if there were any requirements around noise, because I find it a bit weird that we're, we're writing 
you know, like normally there'd be construction and there'd be mm. yeah it has a requirement sort of that it's 57 decibels um maximum and they they have been doing testing um not at peak times noticeably um and there are some spot spots that are currently over that 57 but they say they'll come down hopefully once they put the final seal on so that requirement is when it's actually complete so there's nothing in the interim because I wonder whether when we're writing we should actually be trying to address this issue which has happened in other parts of the city as well is around when we're building or we're in an alliance or we're consenting that some thought is given to the transitional period before resurfacing happens so it doesn't we don't just keep getting into we, the we, we can take that on board yeah, when we, cool. when we um, address that. I mean, there's nothing in there that prevents that from being Great. included. Mike, did you want to just talk quickly on the... Oh, j just quickly. So one of the questions that was asked um, during this whole process since the noise became an issue would, would dropping it to ADKs make a difference? Now, Waka Katahi has continually said, actually, no, it'll only be one or two decibels and you won't notice it. Um, and they say you'll notice things after three decibels. Um, and if you actually go through all the information on their website, actually reducing it from 100 to 70 has a, a 4.6 decibel drop. Um, so it's clear that actually if we bring it down um, below 70, then we're actually, so there's the graph. That's from the NZTAB website, um, which shows there's a clear drop if you go from 100 to 70. Um, so actually if we go past that 80, go right down to 60, then we're actually gonna give um, have a lot more uh, effect to what's the noise at the moment it's causing. Yeah, and of course that stops at 100, um, and that hasn't been my experience on there. No, it will need to be enforced. It's an observation. Yeah. Um, so, um, so, so I'll... Yeah. Just I think me being relatively ignorant, so what's the current speed limit? 100. It's 100, so you want to drop from 100 to 60. Yeah, temporarily, yeah. Until, okay. and just until the seal yeah, sure. is put on yeah. This is not... This is a request that I write. Yeah, to no, no, I just just for context, I was just trying to understand what it is. And and the context will be put in the letter, so that all of that um, detail. All right. Um. I'll, so it's been moved and seconded. So I'll open it up for debate. Pauline. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Um, oh, and thank you for the presentation. It was very clear and good. Um, on that meeting that I attended as well. And the thing is that. Um, a couple of things the residents pointed out was when a motorway is built in, say, Auckland, and it's within 200 metres of residential house, they put up fences up there, and they, have, they mitigate the noise. And that question was posed to NZTA, and their response will, was there's more cars on there than we have here. And that really didn't go down that well, because there's a reasonable number of cars using this motorway as well, and more to, be, more to come. Um, so that was the other thing, and somebody mentioned that there could be, um, there are acoustic panels that can be put up rather than solid fencing, um, so they may look at mitigating it in that way. Um, also the fact that they measure this, uh, the decibels within 200 metres of the motorway, whereas many of these people lived 650 metres away, they were having to have their doors and windows closed because of the roaring noise, they were really, really stressed about this and saying that their windows and doors are also rattling as the cars speed by. So they've been really, really negatively impacted by this. And also, as um, Emma pointed out, the, the monitoring has been done um, between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., which is a l little bit unfair because the traffic does begin at, look, I don't know, 6.30 probably. So I just wanted to highlight those points that people were very, very angry, very upset, and they were there first this motorway has been imposed on them. So um, now that the government has brought the wellbeings back in to the Local Government Act, I think we've got a, um, a bit of leverage there to try and get some, some sympathy for these people and, a, and to have a temporary <coughs> mitigation would be very, very helpful. So thanks, Leanne, for doing that. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aaron? Um, I would have been very supportive of ADK. I myself live 50 metres from State Highway 1, and uh, when we went through this process and had the temporary for it, and, and it broke up something terrible down there, yeah, they've had a bit better luck on this one. Um, and with the vehicles going past the 80k, you don't notice it. So I would have been a lot happier with 80 versus 60. It seems a, a, a very big jump from the current 100, and that road is flying really well admittedly to the detriment of those neighbours right now until that seal's done. So um, I would have preferred we'd 
ask for 80, or are we asking for 60 to try and get to 80? Yeah, we're in debate. Yeah, that, that, that's all. Yeah. Um, I know that it sounds like a, a really big drop, um, but it will have a really big impact. The reality is that when people are driving on this road, everyone always takes into account that 10k buffer um, that you know they're going to be pinged and things for. So I think that asking for 60 hopefully will mean that people travel under 70. Um, and while the road surface is currently unfinished without its proper sort of state highway type um, top seal and the quiet surface seal, I think that that's a really reasonable thing to ask for, that, um, that they do that. Um, so State Highway 1 um, that, that runs near Councillor Kewan's place will have that um, proper seal already and this road just doesn't yet. Sam. Really briefly, I'm happy to support it. Um, and I only do that because we're not making the decision. It's only a letter to the transport experts who will consider it. So I get exactly what you're saying, Aaron, but in the end, they'll take on this advice amongst everything else. And, and this is only a consideration. It's, we're not making a decision today. So. Thank you. Mike, do you want to close off? The yeah, yeah, just quickly. And obviously, there's quite a few things mentioned in the report. Um, and so, but what we are seeing, I guess, in the area is the. Um, impact of not just the motorway but also development um, what's that's having on local community if you look at Langdon's Road and the massive development that's actually occurring out there and how that's impacting residents um, and then the motorway we always knew that it was going to have a big impact on St Albans which we're seeing um, I think this was a little bit more of a, a surprise um, and, and but actually when we attended that meeting there was a lot of people there and they were all very they were frustrated they were angry they were tired um, it, was, it was very compelling what they were saying and that was the lived experience. They were living with it and some of them were quite far from the motorway and they were, could not sleep because of the noise that was coming off it. Um, you know, that was presented by a few um, officials um, and I just don't think they were quite listening to what the people actually was, were saying and, and for them to, to actually say they actually won't notice a difference if we if we drop the speed when actually their own information on the website says something different is, is a shame. Um, look, this is only a small stretch, it's not the whole motorway, it's just the Radcliffe Road where pretty much the residential is all, all finished. Um, so it's not going to have a massive effect on travel time, but it will have a massive um, impact, a positive impact on the people that are living around there suffering from this um, noise that's coming off, off the motorway. Like Sam said, it's just a request. Uh, I really hope that Waka Kotahi listens to it and actually understands that this could be a solution um, for a short period of time until the, the seal is um, surface is applied and maybe it may speed them up a bit too to get it done quicker. Thanks. Thank, thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.